Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about complete instruction execution with an example. This is group 12 of division I. So we are going to discuss about the following topics, uh, introduction, benefits, example, challenges, future and conclusion of complete instruction execution. Now we are going to discuss the introduction to complete instruction execution. Complete instruction execution is a process that involves the execution of an entire instruction in one clock cycle. This is achieved through the use of pipelining which allows several instructions to be executed simultaneously. In order to achieve complete instruction execution, it is important to have a deep pipeline with a large number of stages. This allows for each stage to perform a specific function such as fetching or decoding and reduce the amount of time required for each instruction to be executed. Now we are going to discuss about the benefits of complete instruction execution. Complete instruction execution offers several benefits over traditional instruction execution methods. One of the main benefits is increased performance as instructions can be executed more quickly and efficiently. Another benefit is reduced power consumption as fewer clock cycles are required to execute each instruction. This can lead to significant energy saving in large scale systems. Example of complete instruction execution. An example of complete instruction execution can be seen in modern processors, which utilize pipelining to the execute instruction more efficiently. In a processor with a deep pipeline, each instruction is broken down into several stages, such as fetch, decode, and execute. By using deep pipeline, each instruction can be executed in a single clock cycle, leading to faster and more efficient processing. This allows modern processors to perform complex tasks quickly and reliably. Here is an example of complete instruction execution process. Let's say we have the following instruction assembly language, that is addition of R1, R2 and R3. This instruction adds the contents of registers R2 and R3 and stores the result in register R1. The execution process would involve the following steps. The first step is fetch. The CPU fetches the instruction from memory. The instruction is stored in the instruction register. The second step is decode. The CPU decodes the instruction by identifying the operation to be performed, the operands and the addressing mode. The third step is execute. The CPU performs the addition operation by accessing the contents of register R2 and R3, adding them together and storing the result in register R1. In a write back, the CPU writes the result of the operation back to the register file, updating the value of register R1 with the result of the addition. This completes the execution of addition. The CPU would then move on the next instruction in memory, repeating the fetch, decode, execute, and the write back process until the program completes. Challenges of complete instruction execution. There are several challenges associated with the complete instruction execution process in the computer systems. The first one is timing. Each step of the instruction execution process takes a certain amount of time and the system needs to ensure that the execution of the each instruction completed within a certain time frame. Timing issues can arise if the system is not designed and handle the speed of the instruction execution process. The second one is resource allocation. The CPU needs to ensure that the required resources such as registers, memory are available and allotted properly during the execution of each instruction. Resource allocation issue can arise if there are too many instructions or too few resources. The third one is control flow. The CPU needs to keep track of the flow instruction and ensure that the execution of the each instruction is properly synchronized with the, the flow of the program. Control flow issues can arise if there, is, there are unexpected branching or looping conditions that affect the execution of the program. The fourth one is data dependencies. Some instructions depend on the result of the other instructions. The CPU needs to ensure that the execution of each instruction is properly synchronized with the execution of other instructions that may affect the result of the current instructions. Overall, the complete instruction execution process is complex and challenging task 
that requires careful design management of flow, resources timing, and the control flow. Future of complete instruction execution. As technology gets better, computers are likely to become better at following instructions quickly and accurately. This is particularly important in places where computers need to work very quickly and effectively, such as in advanced computing system. One promising research area in using machine learning to make sure the computer is working efficiently and does not get stuck in one place for too long. By using this method, it may be possible to make sure the computer is following instructions quickly and accurately, which can make it even better as its job. Conclusion. Completing instructions fully is a useful technique that can make computers faster and more efficient. Although there are some difficulties involved in this technique, it has important advantages and will probably keep ensuring, inspiring new ideas and progress in computer design. As we look to the future, it is clear that complete instruction execution will play an increasingly important role in high performance computing and other advanced applications. Hello everyone, I am Umkar Kautekar and my role number is 66. Now we will see how a complete instruction is been executed in computer. Talking about the instruction cycle, following are the steps which involves the execution of this cycle. First one, fetching an instruction. It means to fetch an instruction from the memory location to the instruction register that we want to execute. Then the decoder instruction. The decoder unit decodes the instruction available in IR and identify what operation we actually want to perform and what are the operands required. If all of these operands are available, then we will start the execution. After the execution of the complete instruction, we can write back that instruction in the register or in a memory location. Consider the following example, that is add i3, uh, uh, r3 is in bracket and r1. In order to execute this instruction, we require following step. First, fetch the instruction from the memory location and load it into IR. IR means the instruction register. Uh, then fetch operand required here r3 is written in bracket that is it holds the address value of required operand so we need to fetch that operand first now the control signal will give signal of addition so r3 and r1 will be added and result will get stored in r1 now we will see how control signal for execution is instruction with the help of flowchart here r3 is the register which holds the address of data and R1 holds the address of another data. The program counter will hold the address of instruction that will be going to perform next. Here in this case it is 1000. So place that address value of PC into the processor bus. Now that address value that is 1000 is available in processor bus. That value will be loaded in EMAR. Then by read command that data can be fetched placed at that address. And with the help of MUX, it will select 4 in which help PC to automatically increase its value to the next address and it will point to the next instruction. Now the MUX will pass 4 to A and B is connected with processor bus. So processor bus uh, has 1000 as address in it which allows B in it. By add command, ALU performs A plus B and next instruction is available which then loaded in Z. Z out will pass the next instruction to PC as well as Y register via inter internal processor. Then we will wait for the memory completion process. After this memory function completion, value of instruction that is this instruction will be loaded in MDR. Then from MDR, value of instruction is passed in IR. Then decoding units start decoding and identify first operand indicated memory location. R3 holds address that is 1008 in this case will be placed in processor bus. Then again that value will be loaded in MAR to fetch the data. At that location then by read command the value is fetched. Then R1 registers data is placed in Y via the processor bus. Wait for memory function completion then via R3 the value of is 20 in this case is loaded in MDR and from MDR it is passed in B via the internal processor bus. MUX is here multiplexer will select Y that is 
wise register value will be placed in alus a okay accumulator then add command will uh, add r3 and r1 and then we will store it in, into the z register and from z register the result will write back into r1 and end, end signifies the end of particular instruction here for this particular instruction uh, i mean for all instruction the first three cases are uh, generally the same one and uh, from 4 to 7 it depend upon the instruction to instruction execution of branch instructions a branch instruction replaces the content of pc with the branch target address which is usually obtained by adding an offset x given in the branch instruction the offset x is usually the difference between the branch target addresses and the addresses immediately following the branch instruction conditional branch let's assume we have a 16 bit instruction set architecture where the first 4 bits indicate the opcode and the remaining 12 bits are used for addressing memory we will use opcode 0010 to represent the branch instructions the program counter pc is pointing to the memory location where the branch instruction is stored let's say the pc value is 100 the cpu fetches the instruction from the me from memory and loads it into the instruction register ir the cpu decodes the instruction and recognizes it as a branch instruction it then reads the 12 bit addresses field of the instruction and interprets it as a signed offset value that is a value that can be positive or negative the cpu adds the offset value to the current pc value that is 100 to determine the target memory location for the branch let's say the offset value is minus 20 so the target memory location would be 100 minus 20 is equal to 80 the cpu updates the pc with the target memory location that is pc is equal to 80 causing the instruction at that memory location to be fetched and executed next the program continues execution from the new memory location pointed to by the updated pc value thank you